now know that the typical lesions of Parkinson's, which are called Lewy bodies, it's basically a dead neuron surrounded by uh, white blood cells, uh, which are called glial cells, and I talk a lot about this in the upcoming book. We now not only find these in the brain of people with Parkinson's, but we find them on the wall of the gut, which actually means that Parkinson's begins in the gut rather than in the brain. And part of that process is actually lectins getting to the brain. There's a new paper out that insecticides and other biocides like traditional paraquat now have been found to ride on lectins up into the brain. And so that many times we now think that lectins are hijacked by pesticides, by biocides, by herbicides that are sprayed on our grasses and on our crops that we ingest every day. And they're hopping on the lectins in our food and going up to our brain. So rather than being kind of pseudoscience or, oh, come on, how can lectins cause migraines? We now know that there is an absolute direct route from the gut to the brain that lectins travel on, not only to cause their own problem, which is irritation and inflammation, but also, which is now the scariest thing, to bring pesticides and herbicides and biocides, which are everywhere, also into our brain. And so I think it's no wonder that so many people suffer from migraines, and migraines seem to be getting worse rather than better. So get rid of lectins. Second, we, as you probably know, have a sleep deprivation epidemic in this country for multiple reasons. And if you didn't see Ariana Huffington on my podcast, please pull that up. Uh, Ariana is kind of a poster child for sleep deprivation. Uh, in building the Huffington Post, she you know, thought she was one of these people who could go without sleep and only needed nah, three hours of sleep, four hours of sleep a night for maximum performance and efficiency. And it wasn't until she literally collapsed at work, uh, broke her cheek, had to have an operation, that she realized she was not invincible. And she spent you know, the last number of years researching, finding the world's experts on sleep, and spending her you know, years now teaching the importance of sleep. And it's interesting, most of my migraines occurred when I would fly to you know, parts unknown in the United States or Canada, and it usually meant finding barbecue or crazy things and eating it on the plane back. And most of my migraines occurred without sleep that night and usually eating food that I have no business to, to eat. And looking back, I went, well, of course, I didn't have any sleep and I was eating really bad food, and of course I'd get a migraine. So sleep really sets you up for your brain being damaged. Your brain actually has to be washed out. It has to go through a washing cycle every night. And you'll learn about how essential that washing cycle is to get all these inflammatory compounds, all of these lectins, out of your brain. And if you don't do that, and if you don't do that systematically, we now know that that lack of washing is one of the big things that leads to neuroinflammation. And neuroinflammation is one of the big driving factors in all of our memory loss diseases, whether it's Parkinson's, whether it's Alzheimer's, whether it's vascular dementia. Now, speaking of vascular, it turns out, as you learned in the plant paradox, that there are sugar molecules on the linings of our blood vessels that lectins attach to. And I recently gave a paper at the American Heart Association, I think proving, well, at least suggesting, that lectins attaching to our blood vessels is a major cause 
of vascular disease, of heart disease, of stroke, of uh, hardening of the arteries. And we were able to show by removing lectins from over 400 people's diets that we could actually show blood vessels getting more flexible, more reactive, and with less inflammation on the blood vessel. So in the theory that migraines are a blood vessel issue of dilatation or constriction, getting a known irritant, lectins, out of your diet makes a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, now, I mentioned pesticides. We are ramped with pesticides. And interesting, years ago, I uh, interviewed a organic uh, horticulturist and organic gardener who said one of the biggest contributions to memory loss and Parkinson's that he sees in our elderly community is in golfers. And he elaborated on the number of pesticides and herbicides that are sprayed on our golf courses to beautify them. And how these, as you walk the golf course or drive the golf course, are aerosolized into you. And interestingly enough, one of the direct entrances, the closest entrance to your brain, is via your nostrils, your nose. And you then ingest those, you breathe them in, they hop a ride on lectins into your brain. And it was a real eye opener, the vast amount of Parkinson's and mild cognitive impairment dementia that we see rapidly going up in our elderly, particularly in a community like Palm Springs where we have 115 golf courses at last count, maybe the sprays that we're using to keep our golf courses beautiful. So what can you do at home? Please, please, please do not spray with Roundup. Roundup is glyphosate, uh, glyphosate, sorry. And Roundup gets into you. Uh, as you'll see in the longevity paradox, 95% of pregnant women excrete Roundup in their urine. Almost all of us have huge amounts of Roundup in us. And one of the places we acquire it is in our homes. So every time you see that commercial with the guy with the Roundup gun killing weeds, remember that you can actually dig out weeds by hand. You'll actually get exercise. One of the things that's amazing about super old people in the blue zones around the world is that almost all of these communities, number one, live in hilly villages. They walk up and down hills. And almost all of these super old people garden. They weed their garden by hand. They don't spray Roundup. So we talked about on one of our earlier podcasts about doing an exercise that you like. And gardening is one of the great exercises of super old people. And gardening is a lot of fun. Okay, blue light. You've heard me talk about this over and over and over again. Blue light is really disrupting our sleep. Blue light disrupts our eating patterns. Blue light stimulates you, me, to be hungry. Because long ago, we would eat during the summer when light was intense and long because that's when most of the food was available and certainly that's when the fruit was available and fruit is intense calories to store as fat. So blue light stimulates us to eat. It also stimulates us to stay awake because quite honestly, the longer we could have stayed awake eating in the summer, the better off we would have been in the winter. So blue light now is everywhere. It's in our TVs, it's in our computer screens, it's in our phones. There is an app on almost every device now to turn it to non-blue light at sundown and sunset. If you're going to watch TV, and I know you will, just buy yourself a pair of blue blocker sunglasses. And like I've said before, 
Get the ones that make you look like Bono. I mean, they're really hip. Last, artificial sweeteners. Please, please, please do not kill your gut microbiome with artificial sweeteners. Duke University showed a packet of Splenda kills off 50% of the gut microbiome. One packet. Sucralose. Your microbiome is one of your major defense systems against lectins. And one of the reasons we're having an epidemic of people being sensitive to lectins when they weren't 100 years ago is we've done in our microbiome with artificial sweeteners, with the antibiotics that we take, and the antibiotics that are fed to our animals that we then eat. So do yourself a favor, ditch the artificial sweeteners. There's plenty of options out there like stevia and monk fruit, inulin, just to name three.